What's up you guys, FSC Street Shop. Oh, it's a nice, beautiful, overcast day today. We got Orwell right behind me. Orwell is a 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over with a 7FB 3406B, about 400 horsepower Caterpillar engine. Right behind that is an Oshkosh fire truck that's apparently property of the Air Force. We're taking it to Baltimore. Let's go ahead and start today's video. Okay, boys and girls, what we have here is an Oshkosh truck. It's a fire truck. This one's going to Baltimore. Apparently, it's property of the Air Force. This one measures under 13 foot six tall, so we can run the toll roads. By the way, they pay the toll roads on this one, so it doesn't come out of my pocket. But that's the truck right there. It's 10 feet wide. This one weighs 36,000. So we don't have to worry about overweight. We may have to worry about axles, but they permit us for 12, 40, and 40. 12,000 on the steers, 40 on a drive tandem, 40 on a trailer tandem. So we don't have to worry about anything. For the big heavy units, I have these big clevises. These clevises have a working load limit higher than my chains actually, which if I remember right are eight and one half tons that's 17,000 pounds my chains are good for uh, 15,000 pounds so we've got plenty provided the bolts fit through the holes we're good so start putting the clevises on and next we'll go get our chains Sometimes you have the holes that are too small for these clevises, so I have lighter duty clevises that'll work. Unlike the military trucks, the clevises are already on the trucks. Well, these are not, so we have to supply them. Not a big problem though. It's just part of the equipment that I carry. This trailer is also a stretch trailer. You see the seam. This trailer could be made to be longer if need be. We don't need it on this run. That's just what's available at the moment. One thing I did forget to mention is when you tighten these, I know I mentioned it on the video with the excavator, it's same thing. The twisting action isn't what makes this tight. It's just the fact it's there. So tighten it till it's tight and back it off like a quarter to a half turn. Once the chain's pulling on that, it won't move a bit. Now you have to make sure you pull these forward. The mistake a lot of guys do is they'll pull them back. You see how it touches the truck? You'll gink up this tail pan. They have to pull forward. Absolutely have to, there's no other way. Unless you grab it by a suspension arm or the frame, which you can, if you have to. Hook that there.
<laughs> there we go. Loosen it up just a touch. I want to try to get one more link. There we go. It's no accident in the direction. It's easier to push the binder down. I chose that direction on purpose. Just look at your thread. Plus, as you suck the truck down, the truck won't bounce at all, or at least very, very little. And then it rides smoother. Those of you that drive rollbacks know very well you want to tie those vehicles down by their wheels. But you feel, if you got like a big Suburban, you'll feel it bounding back there. It's like an extra bounce, almost like pulling a tanker, I guess. That's one. Go to the back and do the same. Now I cross these because there's no side to side angle that'll work. If I hook from there right to here, it's dead straight. The truck can go one way or the other. Granted, you gotta get pretty wicked with the wheel to get that to move like that. But just in case, I don't like to do that. I like to cross them. Front ones I don't cross because there's enough angle, you know, for the buff. There's enough angle at a 45 angle to go like so. That protects the truck from going side to side. Back here, we don't have that. Typically here, what I do, I go through the D-ring and hook the frame. I could always do like this, but then the binder gets farther away. Although, I don't like how that sets up. So we are gonna do it like so. Perfect. Again, I want to pull the binder to me to tighten it. So I choose the direction by the direction of the threads. And away I go. When you're tightening these, sometimes a link will roll, it'll pop, and you'll go down quick. You don't want to have your fist closed when you push, you want to have it open. If you have your fist closed, you may punch the trailer with the handle, and that handle will hurt your fingers, break them. So you want to do it open face hand, pushing down. Now if it pops, it'll just go bam, but you won't pinch yourself. It'll still hurt, but you won't hurt yourself. It's the name of the game, ain't it? Don't hurt yourself. Now I'll just get the back. I'll do that when I get over there. That's why we're steel toes, boys. There we go. I need to get a carpet. Cab jack leaks as normal. Oil pan is not. That's good. Or maybe it is. No, I don't see no droplets. I think we're good. A lot of drama involving that oil pan. There'll be another future video. I would talk about it on this video, but I have to see how that situation resolves itself. That's the carpeting floor right there. If 
you let the chains rub, they will grind themselves down. Of course, if you weaken the chain by grinding material off, well, it's good for less weight and could break. So we pad them with carpeting. See how it rolled that link right there? Now it should stay, hopefully. All right, guys, so now that you know how to tie down 36,000 pounds of truck with 60,000 pounds total of chain, let's go ahead and push in the buttons and get the hell moving. That one stroke being out is gonna drive me nuts. I ordered them. They're made in Canada, apparently. Well, that's better than China, I suppose but they're stuck at the border. They ran out of them. I got them on order. As soon as I get them, hopefully next week, I'll go ahead and put it on. But for now, we're just gonna go one strobe wheelie in the front. Of course, we got the strobes up top. They work just fine. And with the marker lights, these trailers are set up to have strobes that work in the back.
Whatever you're in need of, I can't stop now. I know you too well, but they never will. Once we were burning lovers, and nothing but a breath.